Hey guys, Devin here with Admiral Off-Road, and today we're going to be replacing our brake master cylinder. Let's get started. Alright guys, here we are looking at the master cylinder here. Uh, in the case of the Cherokee, it's going to be right on the firewall on the driver's side. Uh, the nice thing about the Cherokee as well is look at all this space we have to work on. It's really not a big deal to remove it. Um, if you can see here on the uh, brake booster, you can see all this dark area where the uh, uh, master cylinder has been leaking and that's why I'm replacing it. My pedals just felt real spongy um, and I can see that it's leaking here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the two brake lines coming out of the master cylinder. Um, in our case, it's going to be a 12 millimeter. Um, I also have a little uh, catch pan underneath here just to catch any brake fluid that's going to come out. Next thing we're going to do is remove um, the nuts that hold on our master cylinder to our brake booster. And there's going to be one just on the other side here. All right, now that we've got the uh, brake lines and the first set of nuts removed, we can remove this black bracket that holds on our proportioning valve and a couple other bits. Um, and we can just pull this straight off now. Um, it might be a little bit, of tough, a little bit tough just because there are some brake lines still attached. Um, but we won't really have to remove anything else. We should be able to just pull it straight off, just like that. And now we have a second set of nuts that holds the actual master cylinder uh, to the brake booster. And this one, just like the other nut holding this on, is going to be a 13 millimeter for the Cherokee. Alright, now that we've removed the two nuts that hold it in place, we should be able to just slide the master cylinder right out. There we go. Alright, we've got the old master cylinder out of the Jeep now, and we're ready to install our new one. Um, unfortunately, my new one looks like didn't come with the reservoir, so I'm going to have to take this old one off and put it on the new one. Uh, I know some do come with the reservoir, uh, evidently mine didn't. Um, so it's, it's nice and easy to take them off though. There's just two pins that hold it on. Um, so I'm just going to take a punch and a hammer, punch these little pins through, and I should be able to put it on the new one. Um, but just something to keep in mind when you're buying them. Evidently some uh, come with the uh, reservoir and some do not. All right, with those two pins removed, let's see if we can pull this off. Come a little bit. So finally, after a few minutes of pulling and wrestling with it, we got the uh, uh, reservoir off the old um, master cylinder here. Um, cleaned it up a little bit, ran some brake fluid through it and some brake cleaner. It just had a bunch of nasty stuff in there. So I uh, got it all cleaned up pretty well and ready to put it on the new one. Um, so we want to make sure we have everything lined up here. And these nibbles just have to get shoved down in there. Fluid in there, help us out. There we go. Boom. Now we can put our pins in and we can start um, bleeding our master cylinder. All right, now that we're all attached, we can start bleeding our master cylinder. All right, so bleeding our master cylinder is actually pretty easy. Um, there's one special tool you're going to need, and it's just these guys here. 
Um, so this is a bench bleeding kit for master cylinders. Um, they come with a bunch of different size um, inserts that we're going to thread into our holes here. And then we're just going to loop the uh, tubes and put them back into the fluid. So we're going to fill this thing up, screw these guys in here, and then we're just going to start pumping the master cylinder. And we're going to be just be pumping all the air out and then all the fluid in. So we're just going to kind of give it a big circle. It's kind of like bleeding your brakes. Um, when you do it with one person, you just open and shut it, which you can actually do. You can bleed your uh, master cylinder without this. All you would do is you would put uh, stick something in here, you'd push, depress the master cylinder, and you would let all the fluid drain out, and then you'd plug it up. You could plug it with your fingers and then let it out. And then you'd push it again, and you can plug it up. So that's kind of like the, the, um, the cheap way to do it without it. Um, but this tool is like $10. It's really not a big deal. Um, and I'll show you how it works. So we just thread this in here. Um, and they do come with all different sizes, so it should fit um, any master cylinder you're working with. You don't have to get them real tight. Finger tight is fine because there's uh, not really any pressure. It's just pushing fluid through the lines. Okay. Now that we've got these in place, I'm going to go ahead and fill up the reservoir with brake fluid. I'm going to take these two ends and I'm going to put them inside um, all the way up to the brake fluid again. All right, now I'm going to take the punch and I'm just going to start pumping this very slowly. I don't want to go quick with it, just in and out a couple times and get the fluid to start flowing through it. So you can see a couple bubbles coming out of there. All right, I think that's good. Now that we've got the master cylinder bled, we can go ahead and reinstall it. So it should go the same, uh, go together the same way you took it apart. So I'll just kind of move this other bracket out of the way here a little bit. And we've got to make sure that we slide it over the shaft inside of the brake booster. Just like that. And I'm going to kind of loosely install everything until we get our hard lines. Um, put into the uh, master cylinder just because these can sometimes be a pain to try and move around uh, So I want to be able to have a little wiggle room here um, That way we can make sure we line everything up and we don't have anything cross-threaded With everything aligned and loosely in place, we can screw in our brake lines. Uh, again, we want to start off doing this by hand. That way uh, we can avoid cross-threading anything because they do uh, leak if you do that. So we don't want to do that. All right, so I've got everything tightened down. I've got the brake lines attached and I checked for leaks and we're good there. Um, if you go inside the vehicle and you press on the brakes, they're still gonna feel spongy at this point and that's because we still have air in the system. We did uh, bleed the uh, master cylinder on the bench, but whenever we disconnect lines and I connect them again, there's gonna be air introduced into the system. Um, so we're gonna need to bleed the brakes before we can drive. Uh, I have a video all about that, so I'm not going to show how to bleed brakes in this video. Um, but what I would do in addition to the normal uh, brake bleeding procedure is I would bleed these two lines here instead of just going to each individual wheel because that would take a long time to get the air from here all the way down to the, uh, to the wheels. And that's just going to be a lot of fluid that you're wasting trying to bleed them. So what I would do is there's a connection here and then there's a connection back here at the distribution block. And I would have somebody get inside of the vehicle, press down on the brakes, I would open the line, close the line and then have them let off the brake. So it's kind of the same procedure as doing a two person uh, brake bleed at the wheels, but I would just do the same here. So again, I'm telling the person to push down on the brakes. I crack the line open so I can hear air. Or I'll see some fluid come out. I will close it and then I'll tell them to let off. Um, so thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below 
If you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe. Thank you.